three. We mentioned earlier the improv wolves are on their way. Coming to the Tunbridge Wells Fringe Festival on Sunday, 9th of July. I'm delighted to say Robert Lane is with us from the group. Robert, afternoon. How are you? Hi there, Pat. I'm very well, thank you. Nice to talk to you. And you. Coping with the heat, are you? Yeah, well, I'm in my little sort of studio creative room, which is at the top of the house, and there's a Mac computer pumping out hot air at me. But if it gets too much, I just can have a cup of tea for a bit. How is it in your studio? Oh, it's all right, it's all right. The only time you need air conditioning is on days like today, and ironically, that's when the air conditioning packs up. Ah. (laughs) So anyway, enough of our worries and woes. Uh, Give us a little background, if you will, to the Improv Wharves. How did all this come about for you? Well, Improv Walls at the moment are four performers, um, sort of a mix of experiences and talents, really, but we're all uh, fairly experienced improvisers that have worked with different groups. I've worked with a group called Foghorn Improv and another group called The Intellectuals, based up here in the Midlands. And um, Lawrence is a a professional actor. He's been on telly and all sorts, and Mm. Matt Dippins has worked with Wow Impro in Coventry and Lee Goodall is a stand-up comedian. So you've got a sort of a, a mix of experiences and, and we've just worked together over the years and enjoyed each other's company and abilities <laughs> on stage and thought it'd be fun to do something together. So we've created this show called Improv Wolves, which to give it its posh name is short form comedy improv games. But if anybody sort of remembers the TV show, uh, Whose Line Is It Anyway, that was short form improv. So it's kind of in that that world, really. Right. Well, what's the appeal of improvisation? Because for many, you know, maybe many stand ups or actors, they would hate it, wouldn't they? Well, it's frightening, and I think that's part of the appeal. It's dangerous. It's notoriously hard to sort of plug, really, because I can't tell you what the show's going to be because I don't know yet. A lot of what happens is taken from audience suggestions. The way we describe it is that we create comedy scenes on the spot from audience suggestions. So the audience are at least half as important as we are, really, to to give us some ideas and get us going. But the attraction for it as a performer is, is just that danger of it, really. Like, at any moment, it could all go terribly wrong. A bit like a live radio show, I guess, really. You, mm. you don't necessarily know what's going to happen. But that's kind of much more interesting than than knowing what the next line's going to be, if that makes sense. Yeah. No, there is. There's a real rush of adrenaline, isn't there? And I guess, you know, that that is part of the appeal. Although, as you say, the audience are vital in this. How do you warm them up? How do you get them in the groove for, you know, some decent suggestions you can work with? Well, you know, it's interesting. I always ask at the start of the show, give me a cheer if you've seen an improv show before and a certain number will cheer and say, give me a cheer if you've never seen an improv show before. And it's always more that cheers, which either means people don't go to improv shows twice or it means that (laughs) something about the show sort of grabs people. And I think a lot of people turn up with a really curious um attitude towards it which is great it's lovely to have a curious audience because again they don't know what's going to happen but it's sort of like almost encouraging people to heckle in the nicest way possible (laughs) which often audiences are very polite they're not used to shouting stuff out so being given that opportunity to do it when we ask at appropriate moments i should add um i think they find quite liberating and it must be great to be you know part of the audience to know that your suggestion could be the highlight of the evening exactly right you know like some of the best stuff might come from something that's said in the room and also the other thing that we like about it is we're sort of at the height of our creativity really because we're making things in the moment Mm. and probably people have experienced this it's the same as any creative situation or or working in a group particularly a sort of diverse group of talents you might end up coming up with ideas that you would never have done sat at home in your your studio on a hot sunny day like it's just something about being on the stage with the people and in the room with the people in that moment and it's very ephemeral the other thing that that makes it tricky to describe is there's no point me really talking about our last show because if you weren't there you know you you weren't there so (laughs) what it's also quite hard to film we do have a little video on youtube of us sort of highlights of one of our recent shows but it's kind of hard to get across if you're in the room it's the most fantastic thing but if you then try and describe it to someone afterwards Without the context, it's very difficult to understand, I think. But it is a real skill, isn't it, to be able to think on your feet and react in the moment with confidence. And the character's obviously inspired by the audience, but I I guess they come also from maybe the physicality as much as what they say. Yeah, there's the other great thing about this is that everybody approaches it in different ways and has different kind of strengths in the way that they work. So some performers are very physical and their characterization comes from what they're what their body is doing, whereas other people are very voice-led. 
um, and we enjoy playing around with those different ways of doing things and it's it's kind of in what you ask from the audience but and also sort of with this group it's being comfortable and safe with each other on stage and knowing the big the big secret really is knowing that we've got each other's back and that if i'm if i'm gonna slip up at some point somebody else is gonna be there to you know to catch me as i fall which is the greatest thing although we do all have experience of getting up on stage with people we've never worked with before and doing <laughs> uh, improvised stuff and that in itself is very thrilling is it is it thrilling are you, or yeah. <laughs> Do you think, oh, I wish I had me, my gang around me now? Well, it's a bit of both, really. It's like, I guess it's like sport, you mm. know, like you can have a, a kickabout with, with people you've never met before and be, oh, God, they're good. That's, that's great. And they're even lifting me to an ability I didn't know I had. Um, but then also working with people and you know that they're going to be right behind you and you can pass the ball back to them. It's, it's all great, you know. And as I say, the, the real fun of it is, is, is not quite knowing what's going to happen on the night. And we're out playing lots of shows all over the place at the moment, particularly over the summer doing different fringe festivals. And I don't think any of us have ever been to Tunbridge Wells before. So oh. the opportunity to go somewhere new. Um, and audiences are different all over the place as well, which makes it very interesting. Yeah, Tunbridge Wells has a reputation. You would have heard of disgusted of Tunbridge Wells. You know, it's quite well to do. Um, it, it's not necessarily snobby, but they they expect, I think, a certain quality. You know what oh. I mean? Okay, well, maybe we shouldn't come. No, yes, that's fine. <laughs> that's absolutely fine. We love. We talk about this a lot, like the localism mm. when you play in different places, and and they'll often, if you ask for suggestions for stuff, they'll often want you to say something rude about the next town along <laughs> in that way. So, and if, when we're out of our area, that's quite fun because we don't, we don't know what the references and stuff are. So we we learn pretty quickly. We learn a lot about a place actually when you're asking the audience for their ideas, which is mm. quite interesting. Okay, what sort of stuff have you learned then? Where were you most recently, and what do you recall about the place? We were at, um, I would pronounce it, Bath Fringe Festival. Oh, okay. The group yeah. said Bath Fringe Festival a couple of weekends ago, and that came up, actually. We were away <laughs> doing our thing, and we have a game where you can meet the world-famous oracle who can answer any question, and it's, a, it's an improv thing called Three-Headed Character where we do a word at a time as we answer the question each. Oh, right. And the yeah. first question was, how do you pronounce Bath? <laughs> which the only answer to which was like, well, we say it like this. Thanks very much. I'm saying, is, it, is that where you all take a word and you form a sentence and an idea and it makes coherent sense? The last sentence of that might not be the case, but that is the, that's the objective, yeah. So each person along adds something into the... the um, the answer in the case in the way that we play it which is fun because you can sort of trip up the next performer by not saying the thing that you were expecting them to but that's the real secret of this improv stuff yeah. it's like you, you if you go on with a an idea so you know if we're in a certain location and you go on thinking oh this would be great It'd be funny if i say this that doesn't really work because it might not have any context with what the person before you is about to say so it's all about mm. being open to the moment and the greatest lesson for me in improv has been your obvious is not someone else's obvious because we all self-edit in this horrible way don't we where you're sort of thinking i don't say that it's too obvious everyone's yes. thought of that. yeah it's not always the case actually and i i saw an interview where lee mack was interviewed by i think it was rob bryden and uh, rob bryden said oh you've got the the quickest mind and uh, lee mack said well it just comes to me you know it, it 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 seems obvious he says there's a gap it's obvious to me what the next line should be but not everybody has that talent do they uh, I guess not. I mean, I, I would sort of say that anybody, I don't know if I should say anybody can do this, but anybody can say, well, we all improvise all day, don't we, really? I mean, mm. you're, you're hosting a radio show, you've got to improvise around what happens. Um, at work, somebody might not do the thing that you're expecting them to do. Somebody on the road does something you're not expecting to do. Mm. And it sort of goes the opposite way with me as well. Having worked in the world of, of improv performance has helped me in day-to-day -day life so much. The biggest thing being, however badly something goes, we're going to get out of it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it might be uncomfortable for a bit, but yeah. it's, it's going to be okay. And that's a very useful thing to have in the back of your head a lot of the time, I think. How much of what happens on stage do you remember once the performance is over? Oh, that's a great question. Not that much sometimes. And also the thing is that the audience will notice things that were not that... Uh, didn't stick out that much to us. Mm. And even more so, you know, you come off stage sometimes and someone say, oh, what Lee was doing in such and such a scene was really brilliant. I'm like, I didn't even see that because I had my back to him because it's not <laughs> rehearsed. I didn't know what he was doing. So it's kind of, it's like, 
it's like playing great music in a fantastic band or whatever. Yeah. You know, you're, you're sort of, you're in the flow state. So you're kind of paying attention to what everyone's doing and you're paying attention to the audience. You're doing your own thing, but it's not perhaps going in in quite the same way as, as you know, but anytime you perform, it's a weird sixth sense, isn't, isn't it? You're sort of aware mm. of the audience, you're aware of the room and the rest of it. But yeah, chatting to audiences afterwards, they often notice things that we, we didn't. <laughs> Well, there'll be plenty to notice. As we say, the Improv Wolves are performing on Sunday, 9th of July at the Chuck and Blade on Camden Road, 26 Camden Road, over in Tunbridge Wells. The show begins at 2 in the afternoon. Tickets are on sale now and priced at £10. Robert Lane, thank you for being with us. Enjoy your time in Tunbridge Wells, won't you? Oh, thanks so much, Pat, for giving us time to chat about it. And uh, speak to you again. Thanks. Thanks.